For many, a world without personal computers would seem impossibly difficult to do anything in. However, the world of personal computing wasn't always there, and in the mid-1970s, one computer company on the brink of bankruptcy built and sold the one machine that would kickstart most of the personal computing industry. This is the story of the MITS Altair 8800, and the massive barriers broken to produce the machine that started a revolution. Of course, computers existed as far back as the 40s, but were either powered by vacuum tubes or later on transistors, and were the size of an entire room. These tiny transistors are destined to play a big part in our electronic age. They will make possible smaller, more compact electronic devices that will need less maintenance and have a longer life. Intel set out to change this with the 4004 microprocessor, which packed many transistors onto a single chip or die. Fast forward a bit to when Intel releases the 8080 microprocessor, and maybe a month or two afterwards, the stage seems to be set for the development and release of the Altair. MITS, short for Micro Instrumentation and Telemetry Systems, was founded in 1969 in Albuquerque, New Mexico, by Ed Roberts and Forrest Mims. By 1971, they had begun shipping calculators, but by 1974, it was clear that MITS was losing money and was almost bankrupt. With the release of the 8080 microprocessor, however, MITS saw an opportunity to be ahead of other computers of the time, which for the most part were still using the 8008 microprocessor, which was slower and less capable. With the invention of an expansion bus, known more commonly as the S100 bus, the Altair seemed as if it couldn't get any better. User expandability was a questionably implemented feature in most computers of the era, and the expansion bus would make it easier for consumers to expand their computer to do what they wanted. This would become a major selling point of the 8800, and a market for cards to fit in the slots would pop up almost overnight. The Intel 8080 had a selling price of $360, but, in a deal that would seem a bit ridiculous even today, Ed Roberts managed to get them for only $75 per chip. The one thing that many would say was the lifeline of the development process of the Altair was articles in various magazines. In October 1974, Mitz shipped the first prototype to the Popular Electronics magazine. However, it never arrived due to issues with the shipping company. The article itself was based on photos of the machine, and the computer on the cover was just an empty box. The publicly released Altair had a completely different layout. Upon release, the computer shipped with just the basics, and would either come in kit form, in which you had to build it yourself, or assembled for a higher price. This proved to bring in both people wanting to use it practically as a computer, and enthusiasts who wanted to build it themselves. The Altair was the inspiration for the Homebrew Computer Club, which included Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, who would go on to produce the Apple One and other home computers under the brand. Additionally, the 1975 article about the Altair inspired Bill Gates and Paul Allen to write a version of BASIC for the Altair. They would later begin working with MITS, going on to found Microsoft. And so we, we wrote these, this company immediately and uh, offered to do a BASIC for them. And they thought that was interesting. They called back and said, well, you're serious. As for the fate of MITS, they were acquired by Pertec Computer Corporation in 1977, and despite sales, the name and computer lineup were retired only a year or two after, due to the hardware use being outdated and no longer extremely powerful. Pertec was eventually split into two companies, one of them being purchased by Triumph Adler, the other being purchased by Scan Optics. Really, that is all that remains of the company and computer that started personal and home computing. Clones, many clones, do exist today, as well as people who have built complete replicas. However, the original Altair remains to be the one computer that started a revolution. Mm -hmm.